Mark and Paulette, the two travelers in Mexico, and we're going to talk to you about our uh, continued house hunting experience. We've already uh, videoed six houses in a, in a previous mm -hmm. video, and I'll leave the link to that video below in the description. And now we've gone through, visited five more houses. Yeah, five more in the next video. And we're going to, we'll talk about those houses, we'll give you the information that the uh, sales price, the square footage, and things like that. And uh, feel free to comment below if there are some houses you like, some you don't. If you don't like any of them, um, feel free to comment below. Now, also within the video, we're going to talk about some of the things that we have noticed while looking at houses that are just a little bit different than in the in the United States. So. Uh, we'll cover just a few of those kinds of subjects too. Yep. This is a new neighborhood of a house number seven that we're looking at. This is the outside. As you can see, a lot of these places are still under construction. Um, and this house right here is the one that we're being shown today. So I'll go ahead and take you inside. Um, this area here is uh, the driveway. So entering inside. Uh, here is the living room. Over there is where the kitchen would be. And coming outside, this is the outdoor space with a wash basin there. Uh, and then the, the backyard area. This is where the downstairs bathroom would go. And then we'll head upstairs. The first room we're looking at upstairs is the master bedroom. This is the, the view. Uh, here is where the master bathroom is going to be. This room is close to probably uh, 15 feet by 12 feet. Here is the guest bathroom. The little natural light coming through. Here is guest room number one. It overlooks both the backyard and the front. Here is the second guest room. Uh, and these are pretty small. There's where the closets would go. Um, I would guess they're maybe 10 by 10. House number seven was 1,500,000 pesos, roughly 75,000 US dollars. It was uh, three, three bedrooms, three bath. Uh, I think the square footage was right around 1,100 square feet. Real estate agents. Now, uh, in, a, in the United States, a lot of times you'll go to their office, you'll meet them. And then a lot of times they'll just, they'll take you around to different houses and stuff. And Mexico, it's a little different story. What we've discovered is mm -hmm. that they, um, you know, once you contact them, they um, will send you some specs on the house. They won't tell you the address or anything like that until the, like the night before you're going to go look at it uh, or early the next day. They don't for some reason they just don't give out location information uh, until right before you have to go. Yeah, and that's kind of strange because I know that in the United States, like they'll even give you the address where you could drive by it if you want to, you know, and then later on you'll hit up with the realtor, usually at the realtor's office, then you'll take their car mm -hmm. and then you'll go check out the inside if you'd like, you know, the neighborhood or whatever you saw when they give you the location of the property. But not here in Mexico, they're... It's real funny. I, I don't understand why exactly that is, 
but usually you won't get it until late that night um, or the next day before you're going to meet them. Mm -hmm. Then they'll send it to you. And they like to send it on WhatsApp. What's app. Yeah. yeah. So. Which, is, which is big here in Mexico. Funny story, when we were looking for apartments, um, a realtor met us at one place and then she said, follow me. And then she took off and we were unfamiliar with the place and, and then left us behind. Um, so we had to actually call her to oh my come gosh. back and get us. Yeah, I mean, she, you know, like if you have somebody following you, you should be aware, you know, to stay mm -hmm. slower, make sure that they're always there. But no, she just like took off. There was cars in between us. She turned, she did this, and she was gone. Yeah. We had no idea where she was. And so we pulled over thinking, okay, she's going to come back and get us. <laughs> but she but didn't. She didn't. <laughs> so um, we had to call her and say, hey, mm -hmm. you left us here. We don't know where to meet you. Um, and then she finally did come back. Yeah. But... Yeah. Uh, you know, and you know, we had one the other day that was really, really good. Uh -huh. yeah. She, she she was really good. She put on her blinkers the mm -hmm. whole time. Um, she drove slow enough for us. She always turned on her blinker when she was gonna switch lanes mm -hmm. to let us know. You know, plenty of time. So she was like an A on the list of realtors that we've followed so far. Yeah. This next one we're going to look at is house number eight. It's in the same complex as number seven and just a little different layout. So I'll take you through the front door now. Um, this house sells for 1,480,000 pesos. So it's just a little bit less than house number seven. Again, this is house number eight. Uh, not much of a backyard at all. I mean, that's it. There's just maybe six feet between this glass door and the wall, and it's even less over here. This is, would be the living room area, uh, perhaps a small dining room in here. There's a bathroom there. A little bit of storage in here. Oh, there's the incomplete kitchen where it would be. There's a door out to the back. There is a little bit of a gap between these houses. There's a small patio area where the, uh, looks like the washer and dryer would go. And now we'll head upstairs. Now this is a two bedroom, three bath apartment. Uh, this is the master bedroom in here. Again, looking out onto the street. Um, I would estimate this one to be probably close to 15 feet deep by about 12 feet wide. Um, here's the bathroom area. Uh, nice sink, or not sink, nice shower area. Um, and you see this a lot in Mexico. There's always, a, it seems like a step up into the bathroom. Um, and then here is the only guest room. As I said, this is two bedroom, three bathroom. Uh, here's a little outdoor patio. Here, here's the view out the back. Um, that wall down there represents the end of where this property would end. And then uh, the real estate agent, not sure what's going on what they're gonna do back here, but hopefully they'll clean up the construction garbage. And that's it for house number eight on this tour. If you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing and follow us, following us on our Facebook group, um, also titled The Two Travelers in Mexico, where we talk about more day-to-day -day stuff, uh, Paulette, post rentals she finds at different areas in Mexico. Right now I'm posting the rentals that we're considering looking at before we actually mm -hmm. put them on our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So when you're on Facebook, you'll kind of see what I'm posting there and get a feel for the house before we actually put it on video. So it's kind of like, 
you get a little bit of extra benefits if you're on our Facebook page. Uh, and then I post different articles, different things about what light Mexico is in, you know, because they do a, a red light system here. Mm -hmm. uh, so I give you kind of just different information that's on there. Yeah. And I'll include a link to our Facebook group uh, in the description below. So this is the entrance to house number nine. Uh, we'll come through this small doorway here. It also functions as uh, this would ordinarily be the garage area. Uh, there are a number of dogs that live here. And then from the garage area, we come into, uh, I guess like a living room area. And then there's another large dining room area with with a bedroom back here, it appears to be. Um, we'll go into the kitchen, which is fairly narrow uh, and not big. I don't know if this will meet uh, what we need for our standard for a kitchen. There's Paulette. Now we're going to go upstairs. Here is the laundry area. And there are some barking dogs. So it's a nice little outdoor patio area here. the bathroom. There's a bedroom in there. Another bad, bad another bedroom with a patio area. And then um, another bedroom. Kind of dark in here. Uh, however, if you pull back the curtains, it's got view of the street and a lot of light would come in. So if you were counting that place had four bedrooms at least she had it set up for four and there were two bathrooms. Kind of cute although maybe a little bit dark inside uh, and this is the facade that's I think been newly redone. So the price on that was uh, U.S. about $60,000. 60300 60300 um, And it was pretty good size. I would guess maybe 14 or 1,500 square feet with both, both floors. Uh, a patio area downstairs and then another patio area upstairs. Uh, the but we never saw the one upstairs. Patio area maybe. upstairs. Uh, Looked like it had a fairly ferocious dog guarding it, so oh, we didn't right. go out there. <laughs> and that was off of one of the bedrooms, I think. Looked like a Doverman or something. Not sure, so we didn't yeah. go out there. But the outside is very cute. The inside is pretty dark for me. I need a lot of light. Um, but I just always have to have a lot of light. I just love it. So there you go. There's another house for you. Notaries. Now, in Mexico, the notaries, I think, basically are the equivalent to like an escrow officer in the United States. However, the notaries are, um, it's a lifetime appointment and they're appointed by the governors of the states. Mm -hmm. You have to be, what, 30, at least 35, 35 years, years of age, of age uh, and have to have worked in a notary office for three years. Three years. Uh, and they do a lot of the the legal work, I think, with regard to like tit title, title and, and things like that. So they are probably, other than the actual finding the house and the negotiation of the price, they probably are the biggest piece of the puzzle. I think so. Uh, with, with regard to a real estate deal. And it's my understanding that they're appointed for life. Mm -hmm. 
And they also have to have a degree in law. Mm -hmm. And have significant experience in that field. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is house number 10. Uh, this is the outside of it, and we'll go ahead and go inside. Um, the front door entrance is right next to the garage, as you'll see, uh, if they were using it for a garage. This little storage area over here. Uh, the garage area here is the actual front door to the house. And then you come into the living room. Well, living room and dining room area. And then this is another little, basically a TV room. And then there is a bathroom with a shower. Oh, here is the outdoor area uh, with the pretty high wall. Um, here's the area where you would have your washer and dryer. Uh, pretty small water heater. Um, and then we'll go inside to the kitchen area. So here's the counter space and this represents all of the counter space in the kitchen cabinetry, gas stove, what, what do you need? Uh, refrigerator uh, area, what, what, what do I need? Uh, here's a uh, decent little pantry area, it's dark in there but there's a, a little bit more room back there. Okay, so we're going to go upstairs now. Um, a lot of natural light coming through the ceiling area. And we're finished going upstairs. Okay, so off to the right is one of the bedrooms. It's currently being used as a storage area. Uh, you would put cabinets or closets right in there. Uh, the view is really not great. You're just looking at your neighbors behind you. And then here is the another bedroom, bedroom number two. Also an area for closets. And it's got the same view that the first bedroom have had of another neighbor. As we see a lot in Mexico, there's always a step up into the bathroom. But this one's pretty good size, got a nice shower, toilet, sink for the guest rooms. And now we're in the master bedroom. Pretty good size, he's got a king bed in here and there's plenty of room really on either side. And here's the closet area that, that might fit Paulette's clothes. And then here is the master bath, toilet sink, um, and a decent sized shower. And now we'll go outside. This is an outdoor patio on the second floor and he's got a pool table here. Uh, and then you basically look out over the view of the of the neighborhood. So this house um, sells for 1,380,000 1, pesos, uh, probably 67, 68 thousand dollars US. Um, the property is about 1,600 square feet uh, construction. Uh, the land area is about a thousand square feet. So for those of you who are counting, it was three bedrooms and basically two and a half bathrooms, two full bathrooms and a half bathroom downstairs. Obviously this horse failed the parallel 
parking portion of its driving test and will not be receiving its Mexican driver's license. A lot of times you'll see um, advertised parking for two cars, that by no oh, yeah. means a garage. Well, for it'll say cars. garage parking, to, or it'll say two car garage. Uh -huh. But a lot of times that could be just out in the open. Yeah. Behind a lock in yeah, I would like say that. most of the time it's just two spaces mm -hmm. in front of the house. Mm -hmm. It's not a garage. Sometimes there's a garage, but yeah. I would say 70% of the time it's just two parking spots. But they refer to it as two car garage mm -hmm. when it's not. So that's something different too that we've learned. Yeah. So this is house number 11. Uh, it sells for 1.5 million pesos. It's uh, not a new house, but it is in a uh, private community. Here is uh, the indoor space when you walk in. The, the area that we just walked through is the, uh, would be the carport area. Here is a very small outdoor space uh, with a little wash basin there um, and I don't even see the place for a washer and dryer here is where the kitchen is the kitchen space anyway uh, a little bit small um, here is the downstairs bathroom uh, with a hanging light fixture. And now we'll head upstairs. Here is the master bedroom area. I would estimate this to be about 15 feet deep by about 10 feet wide. Here is a, a closet area. And then here is the bathroom. and the shower area. Here is the guest bathroom. Now this is all natural light. Again, light fixture hanging from the wall. Here is the first guest bedroom and a small outdoor patio area. Um, I would estimate the size of this uh, first guest room to be about uh, 9 feet by about 12 feet. Coming out here, um, a lot of people use this area as almost like a small living room area here in Mexico and then they hang a, a TV on the wall. Uh, not really sure what we would do with it. Now we're coming into the second guest room uh, and there's the outdoor area in the front. There's Paulette down there. Uh, and then here is the view out the window. And then here is the rest of the room going back out into the hallway. I would estimate the size of the second guest room here to be about 15, uh, well, maybe about 13 by 10. Uh, some of the space is going to be taken up by the closet area. One of the things this place does have going for it is the uh, amount of natural light that comes in uh, and these kind of cool wooden beams. Again, not really digging the light fixture. So the square footage in this house is about 1,400 square feet. Um, and another thing we've discovered um, in a lot of the houses that we've looked at, when they say there's a kitchen, a lot of times that might only be just a metal sink hanging off the wall with no other cabinetry or anything like that because a lot of times, for whatever reason, uh, Mexicans take their ch kitchens with them. Not all the time, but a lot of times. So, 
be prepared for that. But you know what? That's an European thing too. Because mm -hmm. uh, we used to watch a lot of Health Center International in Europe and mm -hmm. it was customary for them to take the cabinets and everything in the kitchen. Yeah. So just, they do the same thing here in Just Mexico. like they were taking furniture. Just like they were taking their furni personal furniture when they were moving a lot right. of things. Right. They would personally take their kitchen yeah. along with them too and then you would have to put in a new kitchen. Mm -hmm. Not all of the houses that we see online are like that, mm -hmm. but there's a lot, you know, like where they'll say dining room, kitchen, and then you look at the picture and there's just like the sink. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Which is good if you want to go in there and, you know, and redo the whole thing. Redo yeah. the whole thing. You have your sink to start with and mm -hmm. work around it, yeah. right? Get it the way that you want it. Yeah. And our video would not be complete unless what she did. Bye guys, see you in the next video. Bye.